So I'm putting together this video with the hope that Dr. Andrew Huberman will come across it at some point. I know it's probably a long shot, but it's something I have to do. I feel he is the perfect individual in the neurological field and in the public eye to help understand and bring attention to this medical disaster. So I had a surgery for hyperhidrosis of the palms called ETS, which stands for endoscopic thoracic sympathicotomy. The utterly life-ruining side effects were not disclosed to me at all, and the same for many others. Compensatory sweating or sweating on other parts of the body other than the palms is the main side effect actually mentioned, but followed up with the claim that the vast majority of patients tolerate it as a trade-off and it's much more manageable than chronically sweaty palms, which is misleading and utterly untrue. Just to give a brief example when doing a top Google search, this is what it states about the procedure. PubMed states, Conclusion, endoscopic thoracic sympathicotomy is an efficient, safe, and minimally invasive surgical method for the treatment of palmar axillary and facial hyperhidrosis. My chronically clammy hands were annoying throughout my life, but I was not disabled or held back in any way from doing anything. My quality of life after the surgery got 1 billion times worse, and that is not an exaggeration. So as a result of the surgery which took place on my T1 and T2 nerves in my sympathetic chain, my entire body's thermoregulation has been seriously damaged and distorted. My body's ability to process stress via the sympathetic nervous system has been seriously damaged. I have lost my ability to tolerate exercise, adapt to basic changes in weather or room temperatures. The surgery severely damages the body's autonomic homeostasis, governing subtle changes in the thermal adaptability of the skin, which induces levels of chronic systemic discomfort most people cannot fathom. My inability to tolerate exercise due to the extremely severe thermoregulation problems took skateboarding away from me, my entire life and identity. This is far, far beyond simple compensatory sweating, which is a grossly inaccurate description of what this form of sympathetic chain nerve mutilation does to the entire body. It's utterly dishonest or at very least medically incompetent. There's websites, forums, and Facebook support groups full of literally thousands of people sharing the same exact undisclosed life-destroying side effects. I will be going over specific examples of this later in the video. The nerves in my chest area, inside where my thoracic spine is, feel like they are in a constant frozen knot, like it's perpetually stuck in a sort of frozen state, a tight corset in my sternum surrounding my thoracic spine and ribcage where the surgery took place. My theory is the body reads the damaged nerves as being in the sympathetic free state of the fight, flight, or freeze functioning of the autonomic nervous system and sends those confused signals and damaged signals chronically out to the rest of the body, confusing the whole system. Perhaps cutting the nerves in the core of the body with the claim it's minimally invasive, low risk, is not true. My shoulders crack, my chest cracks, and feels crunchy like worn down chronically exhausted scar tissue. My knees and ankles crack to abnormal levels. My whole body is chronically worn down. When the body's parasympathetic rest state isn't properly activated due to being trapped in a chronically dysfunctional sympathetic stress state, the body's ability to heal and relax with the rest and digest parasympathetic system is severely compromised. The autonomic system governs the mechanism of tension in the body, so intentionally damaging these nerves, is it really a mystery as to why we are having perpetual tension radiating out from that area of the spine? I've had doctors tell me they don't think it's related. Some high expert science being done right there. I can't feel the sensation of excitement inside my chest. Certain spectrums of emotions and feelings in the body are dependent upon the sympathetic nervous system which tells you how you are feeling, the fight or flight response, which you can call excitement inside the body is conducted along the sympathetic chain, which is needed to feel certain things. Damaging this in someone is inhumane and soul destroying beyond comprehension, not minimally invasive. Never disclosed to me or any other patient on any level and is easily understandable as to why and how this would occur with even the most basic understanding of the role the autonomic nervous system plays, aka how feeling itself connects the mind to the body. This is not merely theorizing and speculating. This is what the nervous system damaging procedure does to people, quite obviously. Countless people in support groups and forums online are experiencing the same thing. 
My hands and feet are burning cold 90% of the day. It has perpetually confused my circulation and subtle skin adaptation, which is governed by the autonomic signals sent out by the sympathetic chain running up and down the spine. There's a constant sense of disassociation from my own body, like I'm experiencing my body in third person or something. I literally can't get goosebumps above the area of surgery. I can see goosebumps form on my skin under the point of surgery relative to the spine, and there is a distinct cutoff at the line of where the surgery took place, meaning literal paralysis of the subtle micro changes of the skin needed for cooling and warming. Not explained by doctors performing this at all which is absolutely insane and, again, life-destroying. This is a thermal imaging picture of someone who has had the procedure. My head and everything above the surgery can feel like it's on fire, dry, and burning, unable to effectively dissipate internal heat, like my skin itself is suffocating. Pretty sure chronically overheating the head is a very dangerous thing. I'm forced to wear very little clothes when I'm able to, not because of sweating necessarily, but because my skin feels like it can't breathe. Here is a post from Dr. Andrew Huberman demonstrating the correlation between different emotional and mental states and the flow of thermoregulation throughout the body. The notion that the mind and body are separate is simply false. The nervous system bridges them both and they communicate in both directions to direct our states. States include emotions, but are a larger umbrella for emotional responses that include bodily responses too. States are also more objective to define. This is a heat map from a study described by the book, The Neuroscience of Emotion. And again, severely disrupting these autonomic mechanisms in someone's body and mind is inhumane. Nothing even close to this is disclosed as the effects of the surgery. The so-called success stories are largely from people following up immediately after the procedure. If you were to have asked me if it were a success, a week later, I would have been inclined to say yes, because yes, my hands did stop sweating. The damage to the rest of the body, though, through perpetual autonomic parasympathetic sympathetic dysfunction gets much worse over time. What percent of people out there who've had the surgery develop symptoms down the line from a broken autonomic nervous system go to the doctors and then get totally misdiagnosed and aren't even conscious of what the surgery has done to them? A bunch of people join the support groups online years and years later and acknowledge it took them time to even acknowledge what ETS had done to them. I lost the ability to skateboard and exercise which was my entire life. I was good too and would have gotten much better. A total and absolute waste. Skateboarding was my entire identity and still is in a lot of ways. I am chronically exhausted 24 hours a day due to chronic maladaptability of my autonomic nervous system. I have extreme sleeping problems because of how uncomfortable I am in my own skin. Temperature regulation is very important to being able to go to sleep. ETSawareness.org. What is ETS? Endoscopic thoracic sympathicotomy, also known as ETS, is a procedure that cuts, clips, or removes part of the sympathetic nerve chain in order to stop polymer hyperhidrosis, sweaty palms, or facial blushing. Many people that undergo ETS surgery report serious life-changing complications such as the inability to sweat above the nipple line, causing overheating, severe compensatory sweating, sweating profusely in other areas of the body, back and chest, lack of body thermoregulation, which is by far the worst thing anyone can possibly ever imagine, mental and emotional issues due to the fight or flight response being interrupted by the disruption of the sympathetic chain, and pain or neuralgia in the affected areas. So nerve pain in the affected areas and pretty much over the entire body when it's really bad. So let's go over some of the stories shared by people on this ETS awareness org website and see what they have to say about it. So this dude from the UK, heat intolerance and my whole body constantly feeling overheated, including my face, which leaves me always looking and feeling flushed, lack of emotional feeling, for example, unable to even cry at funerals, hence the paralyzed, autonomic, sympathetic excitement response in the chest that I was talking about earlier, frequently feeling dehydrated no matter how much water he drinks, headaches, burning feeling, especially in the back, but also the stomach, chest, and legs, nerve pain all over, dizziness, often feel faint because of heat intolerance, even in mild to cold weather. So isn't that nice and safe? This dude from South Africa says, I hope they eventually ban this operation. I'm 23 years old now, and I just want to live a normal life as a young adult. I used to be an athlete and enjoy the outdoors. Now I can't, no matter how hard I try. 
my quality of life was taken from me so soon by a surgeon that never disclosed any risk of the surgery, I am now dedicated to searching for a solution. The side effects I feel now are absolutely disabling. I have severe neurological pain throughout my body that is pretty much unbearable. I have been to doctors and they cannot seem to figure out what's wrong with me because it's neurological, it's very difficult to detect. I have severe arthritis in my bones and it feels as if I need to crack my back every other minute. Compressed pressure in my neck and back. My muscles burn severely doing any type of physical activity, and I experience severe circulation problems. We as the ETS community who have had this surgery would like a team just to help us out. The surgery was a scam. That's why it was banned in its original country, Sweden. I would personally like to first see a medical team put together just for us to do tests and find a way to use regenerative medicine such as stem cells and 3D bioprint nerve grafts to help us heal and permanently reverse the surgery. I also think no one should have to go through this, and we deserve compensation for the years that were taken away from us. And last of all, this surgery should be halted permanently. Thank you for reading. Please help us. So that was Josh Hartman from Indiana. So you get the point. People all over the world are all saying the same exact thing. You can go on the websites and forums yourself and find thousands of examples of people sharing their stories like this. Thousands. Here's some from the Facebook support group that somebody pieced together. Having ETS was an enormous mistake. Easily the biggest mistake of my life. Worst decision I have ever made, the surgery. It's ruined my life. ETS has ruined my entire existence. Yes, biggest, most costly mistake of my life. Side effects, horrendous beyond belief. Quality of life was at least 10 times better pre-surgery. I have created a new email address dedicated to trying to get the word out about this nightmare. It's in the description below. I'm open to hearing from doctors, neurologists, lawyers, journalists, and anyone that can help me and others in any way. And to people watching this video, feel free to DM or email Dr. Andrew Huberman with a link to this video. Anything to try and get his attention to listen to all this would be very helpful. I will never ever stop trying to get the attention of the world regarding this crap. It is one of the most heinous violations of the Hippocratic Oath in all of medical history. Anyways, thanks for listening. Try to keep it as brief as possible. It's hard because there's so much information I want to get in here. If you've listened this far, you are a good person. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart and soul. And maybe doctors performing this procedure should get this low-risk, minimally invasive procedure themselves to demonstrate how safe it is and then follow up a year or two later and then we can get their real opinion on it.